So JJ, when Nirvana blew up in the early 90s, Twisted Sister of course was already retired at that point, so the grunge explosion didn't really affect you personally, but as we all know, when grunge hit, it really took a toll on the glam scene in general. How did you feel about that situation as it was unfolding? Well, I didn't really know... I didn't really know personally how bad it was until I spoke to Vito Brada of, of uh, White Lion. And White Lion was a hot, quote, hair metal band. They were from Staten Island, but they were local guys, and we knew them. So I called Vito about uh, – about a, this was about a year later, so like 92 maybe, because I think Nirvana came out in 91. I think Smells Like Teen Spirit hit in 91. After I saw the wasteland in front of me and going, man, must be a lot of guys out of work. <laughs> and I called Vito and I said, Vito, how you doing? He goes, I haven't touched my guitar in nine months. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I heard like Teen Spirit and put my guitar down and said, it's over. And I thought, really? And he goes, dude, yeah, really. I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit. I put my guitar down and said, why would anybody care about a shredder anymore? And that was the end. Well, I was writing an article, let's be fair. I was writing an article called Hair Today, Gone Tomorrow for some rock magazine. And, and, and I, so I spoke to Vito and I said, what, what happened? He goes, man, I heard Smells Like Teen Spirit and I just stopped playing guitar. I said, what do you mean you stopped playing guitar? He said, I put a guitar down. And I said, I'm not playing guitar anymore. So what do you mean? He said, I didn't touch a guitar for nine months. I heard it. I said, who the hell wants a lead guitar player who shreds? They want songs. They don't want all this, blah, 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 you know, this diarrhea guitar stuff. So it basically put me out of business. It scared the crap out of me. I just said, why are we even here? Like, that's what the impact was. You know, if, if Quiet Riot and Motley Crue let off the genre, bands like White Lion were like the, the tail end, you know, six years later. The only band left standing was Guns N' Roses. I wasn't playing. I was still managing bands and artists and singer-songwriters when it hit. I wrote an article about this, by the way. This very quite, and I love you because you're younger, so you come upon this. It's like, I want to know the secret. I want to know, like, what is classic rock? And I already been down that road in my head. And why did, why did the dinosaurs come and wipe out? I want to get this quote correct, and I want to give it to the right person. And I think it was Janie Lane who said what I'm about to say. He was driving on the 405 freeway, through, uh, freeway in Los Angeles when he when KLOS played Smells Like Teen Spirit, and he pulled over, and he went, my career is over, as I know it. Like, why would they know that that much? Like, why would, why would something be that obvious to people? Why would you just know that your career is over? So it had an unbelievable effect, and MTV changed dramatically so a friend of mine was an executive at mtv so i called her and i asked her what happened because I, was it the equivalent of the dinosaur you know of the meteor hitting you know the world and wiping out the dinosaur and she said that um you they would sit down every tuesday to watch videos you know the new videos and um you know like all these little hair bands were like little jets on a runway you know the next the atlantic jet the columbia jet the Geffen Jet, the, the turning point was a video called Man in the Box by Alice in Chains that totally shifted their focus away from, quote, hair bands that had dominated MTV and made Twisted Sister, Twisted Sister, or we made them. But, uh, you know, that was 84 for us. So here we are in 91. So I had a good run, six years, seven years, and then Man in the Box comes out and they look at it and they had a choice to add Man in the Box or a video by a group called Thunder that was your typical product, typical heavy metal band, hair that did all the things that hair is supposed to do and all this shit. And they were on Geffen and that was the next hyped band coming. And they looked at Thunder and they looked at Man in the Box. So Alice and Jane went, uh-uh, we're taking that. And that was a road less traveled. And it wiped out the dinosaur, which was the hair metal bands. And it kind of ended. The only band that leapfrogged and saved themselves was Guns N' Roses. And my theory is that Guns N' Roses was um, not perceived as a joke. They came out of L.A., but I think that Axel, first of all, had a great voice. Uh, uh, um, uh, I think that they were perceived as real, not fake, like really like they were real junkies, not pretend junkies. So there's a authenticity is all about authenticity and grunge is all about authenticity. People wanted authenticity. 
so they got it grunge and it wiped out the um, the perceived frivolousness of hair metal, which is hey man, let's party, let's get the girls and drink and you know like uh, and I think people just got sick of that and they wanted authentic. You know, that's what I think anyway. But you you don't like the term hair metal, you said, right? No, I think it's a derogatory term. I use it because it makes it easy for someone to. I could say eighties metal, you know, eighties metal not here, but yeah, it's a derogatory term. You know, I mean, it's acid rock derogatory, folk rock. I mean, everyone comes up with a with a with a you know, let's label it. It's skinny tie. It's new wave. It's new wave of British heavy metal. The press always has to like do it. Let's just say that American um, American eighties metal is pretty much of a type. It's of a type. It looks the same. It sounds the same. It is the same. To a non, to a non fan, you know, my father used to say that everything sucked after 1945. Like all music sucked. Like he, he made it really simple. 1945 before, after, before great, after sucked. I said, how do you just dismiss 50 years? He goes, it's so easy. It's just baby, baby, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all it is. So if you don't care enough to know, you don't know. Right, so if you don't care enough to know, and you're a casual observer of MTV, you wouldn't know the difference in Warrant, uh, Poison, White Snake. It's all the same, right? It's all the same. But you wouldn't know the difference in 1964 if you didn't care enough to know the difference in the Beatles, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas, Jerry and the Pacemakers, Freddie and the Dreamers. If you didn't know, and you just heard the songs on the radio and showed pictures, you you all go, it's all the same. It's all the same. You know, this is the problem with genre, with genres as the genres move forward. You know, it's all the same. And Motown, you know, it's the same guys playing on every track. You could dismiss it as all the same. I would never do it because I know Motown. So I could tell you the difference between every singer going. But if you don't care, it all sounds the same. If you don't care about Liverpool, it all sounds the same. If you don't care about 80s metal, it's all the same. If you don't care about grunge, it's all the same. That's the problem with that. And country music, you know, if you don't care about country, it's all the same. What does Alan Jackson say about country music? You play a country record backwards, the girl comes back, the car comes back, and the dog comes back, you know? And that's a country guy making a joke about country. You know, I don't know what you say about an 80s metal, you know? Party dude. That's what it should just be called, party dude, right? It's everything's party dude. I mean, you know, it existed as a genre and had a nice run, right? But things evolve all the time. I mean, you know, punk wiped out foreigner, you know, corporate rock for a while, right? Everything everything kind of goes through these these phases. I mean, disco wiped out you know, rock on radio for a while. You know, so if you're around long enough, you see these gigantic trends that come. I mean, if we sit back now with 30 years perspective on this and we look at, at the whole scale of it you know and and uh it goes to your question about classic rock because a lot of the hair band music um now forget the hair band name just say the some of the songs that became hits are classic rock hits so it evolved into an acceptance of a certain genre of music and some stuff survived and and but i think that the whole derogatory nature of the hair band moniker is not it's not something i'm particularly happy about because i think it degrades the bands and and you know there's good bands and there's bad bands in every genre there's good versions and there's not so great versions of it so you know there was probably some really bad grunge bands you know every band that came out of liverpool was not a hit some survive and some don't. Nirvana. So, you know, I got to respect Kurt Cobain a great deal. I, I never, I saw them on Saturday Night Live, that fabled concert where he hit the, his head of the guitar, and I thought they sucked. I went, wow, this band can't play. Right. That was my reaction. Because we came from a hard bitten bar scene where we had to be great every night, you know? And so when I saw bands that kind of looked stoned, they kind of looked like they didn't care, and I didn't have much respect, but I got a lot of respect over time. I thought Kurt Cobain was an extraordinary songwriter and singer and deserves the, um, he deserves his legacy. Hey guys, thanks for watching. 
If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more because there is a lot more to come. All the videos on my channel are original. I'm the one filming, editing, and conducting all the interviews. So if you guys like what you see and you want to support, the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe. Thanks for watching.